Namaste Galactic family. Welcome back to my channel Indigo Angel. Welcome if you're new. I hope that you use the portal on your way into this dimension today. And welcome if you're returning. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notifications bell so you can continue to receive receive my messages and also like comment and share this video. So that way others can find out about the content that I put out here on YouTube. If you've been enjoying my channel and you like to dive into the shenanigans here on my channel, um, like I do. And so, um, yeah, guys, I just want to welcome you here. We are going to be diving into a very dense grid network. I haven't been on YouTube for about the last three weeks. And that is because we've already started working on this Stargate site, this fifth dimensional black spiral Stargate Vatican Stargate site, this Draco Stargate site. We've already been working on this in my group grid work on my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Indigo Angel. If you would like to join any of that group grid work and group healing that I do once a month. Um, essentially, we did some work on this gate site and it was really nice and amazing because we were able to clear up a lot of the, you know, um, the avails, the, the illusions, the electromagnetic smog, the, uh, uh, Lords and rings of Saturn and also the radioactive decay that is surrounding the Stargate system. So I just want to say thank you to all of my patrons who did attend that group grid session. Um, you helped me to kind of integrate more of this energy and because of where we are working on, um, like I said, I did have to take that three weeks off just because um, there is a lot that goes into diving into these areas of the grids um, and just and there's a lot that's bleeding into the current events and honestly, the state of the world right now. Um, so I'm going to dive into a lot of that here in this update today. Um, also, you can find me on my website, indigoangel222.com. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and on my website at indigoangel222.com. You can sign up for my monthly newsletters. And also, um, I sell my book on my website, How to Read Celestial Starseed Akashic Records. And and um, also you can see my readings there. And also I have many pages on my website describing the services and things that I do offer. So I highly recommend going and checking out my website. But first and foremost for this update today, guys, I do want to talk to you about the squiddies. This is not something that is new news. This was all coming up, honestly, about three weeks ago that a lot of this information really kind of hit the tour servers. Um, and so what this is, if you're not aware of this, is that there is a parasitic spiritual invasion that's taking place going by the name Hydra V. This has been identified through the Jim Jones Juice Loved or number nine. And I've really been waiting to speak on this simply for the fact the Hydra system, Hydra systems and templates really and Stargates, they really did take a hit on this one energetically. Um, and so the Decepticon frequency um, really shot through Ashlasia like a laser. Um, but, you know, these aren't the only temples right now that are taking hits because of what's going on energetically here, particularly at the Vatican. All of this is really coming back to these gate systems here. Um, so right now, um, systems and templates that are taking hits on their energetic field, um, whether this be a timeline that's running or a planetary field or a biological field, this would be the Christos and Sophia grids um, and also the Melchizedek bloodlines as well. Energetically, their systems are being siphoned at their crystal seals. Also, um, because of what's opening up in terms of portal systems through the Vatican networks, um, which I'm going to dive in and talk in much more detail in this update. They are trying to hijack the crystal star connections to those particular grid templates. Um, and so a lot has really been going on and it's taken me a while to really integrate all of the information. So that way I can talk about it with all of you. But essentially going back to this Hydra V deal here, I'm going to um, screen share with you guys. Now, this would be the... Uh, Hydra. Okay. And so um, now if you guys know me, you know how I'm going to feel about this, right? Um, 
they are essentially calling all of these parasite invasions hydra and like i said if you know me you've been watching my channel for some time my hydra head is going to turn because these body snatchers okay this is what they are they are body snatchers this is the leagues of the body snatchers they have now essentially plugged the inorganic into the hives Okay, um, so there is really a lot of quite clever and elusive tactics that are going on around this particular squiddy. Anyway, I would like to set the Hydra record straight. This parasite has been identified Hydra for a few reasons, but basically it's been identified Hydra by those who are unaware of the dark squid brotherhoods. Um, if you're on my inner circle, you know I've been kind of um, putting this um, intel out about the Dark Squid Brotherhoods, but I really think we do need to talk about it. Um, all of this, like I said, generating from the fifth dimensional Stargate at the Vatican, but they are they have been basically pushing this out through their subliminal MK Ultra ritual inceptions on Netflix of the Squid Games through their Tell Live Vision, um, essentially. Um, you know, they've, they've been kind of mocking this already in certain subliminal forms. Um, they've also been um, doing rituals associated with this, and they are prepping us for the greater rituals that are coming. Um, essentially, some of you may have heard about the theatrical astral world rituals and their victims. You know, unfortunately, rest in peace to the victims of the Travis Scott travesty that occurred the other night in Texas. But these are um, rituals that they are beginning to perform as um, particular uh, certain gate systems open up. So basically, the not sees, the ones who cannot see, um, the ones we can't see, and the ones who cannot see, they are claiming that this invasion is immortal. Um, and it is Hydra therein because of the fact that it is immortal. Okay, but we have to remember Hydra is not the only immortal squid entity on this earth. Oh, no, no. Um, they're also claiming its invasion is multi-headed and Hydra therein because of this. But, oh, no, no. If you really study these pictures of the Hydra, um, you can see that you know, it's not necessarily multi-headed. It does have a bud. Um, I'm going to show you guys another picture here. Um, this one is another one I want you guys to look at. Um, this one is another form of it. So essentially it is a one headed, um, barnacle, um, but it does have a bud. Okay, so the buds can grow more tentacles, but the buds are not heads. The buds do not have mouths. The buds do not have the areas of the of the operation systems that are associated um, within it. And um, so if you really study these pictures of this, um, which I have spent some time doing the other night and, and the other day, you can really see that this is a multi-tentacled and a one headed entity. And that in itself, my friends, starts to paint an entirely different picture of this. Um, you know, um, some have seen it as an arachnid spider webbing technology. Okay, could be. I've heard this uh, uh, throughout um, some intel that's come forward. But what I've seen is that this is the Cthulhu entities of the squid hoods in the deep Pacific Ocean. Okay, so there is another immortal being that is hiding in the deep. It is an immortal, one-headed, multi-tentacled dragon squid with wings. Now, some of these pictures that I've seen of the Hydra um, and some of them that have, you know, gone into the microscope have had wings on them. So there are a couple different versions of these that are actually um, looming within the Looster number nine. And essentially uh, how this Cthulhu entity is, this is an entity that is using the top power echelons of the Vatican works with and simultaneously with international Willy Wonka groups. And how they're doing this is they're using needles 
Okay. So sexualizing the earth grids, um, they're obelisks. And, um, this is coming through the Draco Stargate underneath the Vatican that really actually connects to the devil's tower. So I'm going to explain all of this. This is also running networks that is running, um, the Albion spine, which is the dragon force through the UK. So I'm going to further, like I said, explain a lot of that. Um, and also explain why I feel Cthulhu is the closest to the truth when it comes to the diabolical spirits behind the squiddy parasitic invasion. So yeah, guys, um, today we're going to really dive into the thick of this. Um, I am going to um, just do some protection here. So I was wearing some of my protection crystals. I have brought some of my bigger protection crystals around me as we talk about this today. And I do have a lighter somewhere and I'm just going to light a little bit of sage as well. Um, I feel, and I have set astral shields around me as we talk about this today, and you may actually want to do the same. Um, so just letting you know, this is a, an R rated spiritual discussion. Um, only uh, uh, just, you know, putting a disclaimer on this video that really um, nothing that I speak of today can be fully proven or disproven. So if you listen today, you really do do so at your own gnosis. Okay. I'm just lighting a little bit of sage here. I'm not going to like light it all crazy, but I'm definitely just going to clear the um, space while we talk about this. Um, and you know, like I said, if you guys listen today, you do so at your own gnosis, you could say my intuition is theoretical and metaphysical in its truest nature, but essentially you are the one who, you know, truly decides your truth and only your gnosis is the truth in your meta universe. So, um, I always do my best to leave links in the description to the sources and the areas um, and the things I've researched and studied. And I highly recommend that you do your own research on these topics um, for yourself so that way you can come up to speed in your most sovereign, uh, God sovereign free state. And so, what we are going to bring forth today is essentially these are the master elite deities behind what is sitting underneath the Vatican, what is sitting underneath the Holy See, the Holy S-E-E, -E, the Holy S-E-A. So this is going to, like I said, also be a cosmic uh, Vatican grid update, which I am going to be pulling up my scribbles map probably towards the second half. So if you are a grid and gatekeeper, a grid worker, and you just want to get to the grid worker notes, you might want to just fast forward to when I pull up the map and start actually going into the grid structures themselves. But um, so this is really going to be highly relevant, given that the Pope um, just recently visited with your president, Clone Joe. Okay, um, they had a meeting over the last week. And it's interesting because I've been, um, you know, hearing a lot of the news in the information about who Joe has appointed as, um, I guess, our, uh, I forget what they're called, but they're kind of like an ambassador that goes and does the affiliations with the um, Catholic Church and the Pope. But essentially, Joe himself has been meeting with the Pope all this week. It seems that they are working together at this time to strengthen the United Snakes connection to the crypto Jesuit order and the pedo Donia gate siphoning that's going on. Um, and um, because they were supposed to be, the Pope was actually supposed to be doing a COP 26 um, environmental climate change summit, but somehow he did not end up attending and he ended up going with uh, to visit with clone Joe. So um, a lot is coming up with all of this, okay? Um, but I do want to talk to you guys about this squiddy issue a little bit more. Now, I know some of you may have heard about this. Some of you may have not. So like I said before, if you haven't heard about it, I suggest getting on the TOR networks and looking it up, what the Willy Wonkas are up to regarding this JJ loves your number nine in accordance to the sterilization programs, the choline programs, the genetic engineering programs labeled on the Georgia Guidestones and the 10 language proclamations they did inform you 
They did inform us, okay? It's giving them consent on some level um, that's handed down by the Dracos and then ultimately re-engineered through their Anunnaki peers. But essentially, this has been identified under 600 time microscopics that there is a hydrobarnacle growing in the inorganic timelines and global human inorganic biology. Now, let me be clear. Uh, let me be clear. Um, this is not to promote division. Okay, we must love and have compassion for all beings on this earth, but we do have to understand that there are inverse ritual currents being ran on and against the law of one, okay, against the GSF systems, the God sovereign and free systems here on this earth. Okay, this is this is huge, and this is impacting everybody, um, regardless of whatever amount of a, a disassociation one might or cognitive dissonance one might have. It's still it's still happening, right? Um, so let me be clear that my intentions of this message does not take away from my compassion for humanity, um, which is most radiant. Okay, from the heart of Lakshmi all the way to Chinamasta. Um, but I do feel that awareness is key here. Remember, knowledge protects humanity and ignorance endangers humanity. So um, that's actually a quote that I got from a new Anunnaki book that I just received. Um, and again, I'll leave all the links in the descriptions. But we must be informed of the raging astral world wars. Okay, the inversals, astro world wars and astro world rituals, the inversals on the LOO and the diabolical insidiousness of the encryption biohacking. Okay, we can be fully illumined, but no longer blind in the shadow. We can be all the way awake, but no longer helpless in the shadow. And we are strong and we are united amongst our collective shadow, our collective triggers, our victimizations, and our worldly wounds, vulnerability, and even our humility in our humanness. This is a part of our power that the they's and the Nazis don't want us to wholly uh, S-E-E, S-E-A, okay? Um, I do feel that this awareness is needed now to actually save humanity of two different species of humans that are emerging and manifesting through this micro etheric AI invading technology and parasitic invasion upholding the staged galactic polarity warfare drama of organic human versus inorganic human, organic timelines versus inorganic timelines, AI versus IA, artificial intelligence, versus indigo angelics. And now in the inorganic timelines, some very unsettling things are beginning to rear their ugly heads. Yeah, guys, like I told you, um, this is going to be an R-rated spiritual conversation today. So if you are sensitive to any of these things, um, I would, I would suggest that you, you know, you earmuffs for maybe the next, uh, uh, five minutes of this update. Okay. Um, essentially all of this is really jolting everyone alive because we realize that these squiddies, all of this, uh, invasion. Okay. This is happening to our indoctrinated groups, like our doctors, to legal and political professionals of all kinds of our Willy Wonka puppets, um, all kinds all over the nation that are being infected with this invasion. It's very unsettling. Um, and the unfortunate thing about it is they are now launching new waves of nursery rhyme crimes Okay, when you thought that they just really couldn't push a boundary any further, they do. Um, and so what I'm seeing is we have pedo in portals um, that are opening up, uh, what I'm calling pedodonia. Okay, um, these are, and this is a lot of what this Joe Biden meeting with the Pope has to do with, is that these portals are being granted permissions to open up in the United States. Um, 
all of this goes back to, like I said, that dark black spiral vortex at the Vatican. And it's not what you think. Okay. So you think that those astral world rituals were bad. This was just an initiative phase to kick off Pedadonia 511 mass harvesting. Okay. Campaigns to run parasites against parental consent on nurseries. Okay. This is why the fish God avatar, the fish God avatar. Okay. The Pope, this is why he met with clone Joe versus attending that COP 26 summit. He was supposed to attend. We are beginning to see the hunger games perch. We are beginning to see the pedogeddon in alignment to the Armageddon. We are um, now going to start seeing a world that will have a great need for anti-parasitic medications, um, something called Havana syndrome targeting. Um, so this is becoming more and more relevant, I think, as more of us are gaining more awareness of radiation symptoms and ascension symptoms and what this is ultimately coming down to between these things. Um, I'll just share my screen with you on this one. Okay, so the Havana syndrome is a set of medical symptoms that include ringing in the ears, fatigue, dizziness, hearing of sudden loud noises, pain in one or both ears, feeling of pressure or vibrations in the head, tinnitus, visual problems, vertigo, cognitive difficulties, fatigue, and dizziness. Um, these are uh, coming from the U.S. Department of State. This is unexplained health incidents. This usually happens to um, people who have served or military families, but this is really happening to everyone at this point in time. They say that this, uh, even though there's no expert consensus on the syndrome cause, um, essentially this has to do with microwave uh, radiation. Okay, um, and uh, the dues, directed pulse, uh, RF energy, LFs, things like this. Um, and so it's a mass psychogenic illness, essentially. Um, and I feel that this really kind of takes account for everything we're feeling in addition to our ascension. One thing that I noticed the most when I really was having severe spouts of ascension uh, symptoms was I noticed that my blood my blood felt inflamed. My blood felt like it was glowing. And this was exacerbating my light body field to um, extremely open up to levels of not being able to actually see the differences between dimensional fields at all, creating a very DMT like experience. And so um, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this Havana syndrome. We're going to be seeing um, a lot of this bizarre and irritable, irrational behaviors as um, those are invaded by the squiddies. Um, and some of you have been able to begin to notice a lot of these shifts in the organic timelines. Um, and another thing that's going to be really going down is they're going to be a, a whole new level of harvesting that is going to occur. Um, this was something that I've been a little bit hesitant to talk about, but essentially this uh, has to do with um, the transitions and the repercussions of this invasion, okay? Um, and it also has to do with the sterilization uh, agendas within this and also the forced breeding programs within this from all the way back from Lemuria. Remember, in some of my updates I've been talking about, we have to integrate Lemurian history. We have to know what happened in those dark priesthoods and those dark squid Cthulhu brotherhoods the Dagon, the fish gods, because this is turning into something that really hasn't been fully thought out according to these mad scientists of the Aryan agendas. The harvesting of organic biology from organic timelines, this won't just stop with pedodonia. Pedodonia is like a symptom in the in the uh the black mass of chaos. Okay. The inorganic due to this wiping through their sterilization programs, through their forced breeding programs, they're going to be wiping a majority of the age bearing women and men. Okay. Um, and what's going to happen is the inorganic will have trouble bringing in quality of offspring as everyone is invaded with these squiddies, okay, of the dark brotherhoods. So the inorganic will have higher ticket prices for blood, hormones, eggs, wombs, uteruses, sperm, organs, surrogacy, 
clones. In the beginning, this may just um, come through um, laws that people maybe won't pay too much attention to, but essentially what's going to happen is slowly is the organic are going to continue to be outnumbered and they're going to be subjected to new forms of Sharia law. Okay. Separating and dividing us into safety nets of red and blue cell blocks and spheres. Um, I've already told you guys, if you are uh, anti-parasitic invasion, you need to relocate to a red state if you are residing in the United States. That is kind of your safety sphere right now because these are the states that will be most likely to push back against mandates. But with these new threats of love potions, we will begin to watch the inorganic start to change, okay? And that's what I said with this irrational, irritable behavior, um, enhanced levels of Havana syndrome, um, again, deep need for anti-parasitic medications. We are going to be watching um, sickness even become more rampant amongst the inorganic as the immunity um, begins to weaken. So what this is going to create is a flesh for flesh farming, okay? Um, organic flesh trading post and extreme harvesting rules to force this agenda. Not even the Vatican overlords at this point um, will be able to use organs or they're chosen for sacrificial rituals because these sacrifices will no longer be of pure bloods. Okay, so they're going to create flesh for flesh farms so that way they can pull in pure blooded beans, poor blooded, pure blooded organs, and pure blooded uh, sacrificial. Um, victims. Okay. We are already starting to see the organic have to travel to other states or even other countries just to receive medical care or organ transplants. So what I'm saying is, is that essentially what's going to happen is these flesh for flesh farms is the inorganic will um, start to need or have a need for the harvesting of the organic organs, reproductive system, uterus, sperm, like I said, surrogacy, cloning, things like this, they will come after the organic for these things. So like I said, this was the R-rated aspect of the conversation here. Um, I'm not here to paint beautiful, pretty pictures for everybody, okay? I'm here to tell you the truth of the things and the knowledge that we need. Remember, ignorance is what endangers humanity, and we have to be at least a couple, uh, 10 steps ahead in terms of visibility of what's going to play out. If you are not 10 steps ahead in terms of visibility of what's playing out, you're never going to be able to get yourself to a place that you don't, that you aren't going to be affected by these things. Okay. Um, all of this is exciting. The predatorial consciousness hive. Okay. It's going the predatorial conscious hive, the black spiral hives. These are in an excited plasma right now, and they are going to go into a state that will get high off the criminalization of organic consciousness due to their need to survival, which will trump all else. There will be propaganda under saving humanity, flesh for flesh future, they will call it, okay? And the Draco villains of the Piscean age will not be put back in their cage, okay? Who's actually really standing up against this? Who's actually really looking at the, the deconstruction, deconstruction that's needed over the Piscean overlord system, okay? We are not gonna be able to fully transition into the Aquarian age without the deconstruction, deconstruction of the Piscean overlords. Really, they should just be locked up in the, the Nephilim inner earth prison blocks and chained like the last giants who ate humans. Okay, this is what they're doing. They're eating humans, the fish gods, the Piscean overlords. Okay, they're, they're not fishing fish. They're fishing man. Okay, and you've been hooked. They've hooked you. Okay, the fishermen are still on the loose and nobody's looking them under the holy rings of Saturn. Okay. But we're, we're going to get to all that, but yes, let's just see how this plays out, right? Let's just see how it plays out. I mean, of course we all want the best outcome here for humanity on this earthly plane. We are all sick and tired of the division. We are all, um, 
calling in cosmic law at this point. I think I've read something, some Corey good stuff. He's talking about that universal law is actually calling upon cosmic law for what's playing out here. Um, universal law typically does try to take an account for all living beings in terms of their outcome, in terms of where reality fields are shifting to and manifesting in terms of a collective field that we're going to share and experience. And essentially, but the problem with this is that it has to take an account for all of the hives that are here, all of the hive minds that are here. And so the outcome of universal law, this is where it often becomes elusive. Okay. And so those who are the commanders of universal law are calling upon cosmic law to come through um, to assist in this situation here on earth. But it's not the time to really even think about that. It's the time for tough love. Okay. Personally, that's how I feel. It's the time for tough love and a slap across the face. Okay. And I say this because I get so many people asking me so many questions, what the outcome of all this is going to be. Um, do we see any good that's going to happen? All of these things. Okay. I want to say that this is really about your individual experience here. Um, this is all about what you can observe, the information you can observe, the intellect that you can take into your field. Okay, and break that information down, look into the future and see where you can apply yourself on this reality plane here on the earth, that you can transcend the limitations of those that are locked within the genetic binding, slavery binding, and soul binding, egregoric binding to these um, undesirable paths. Okay, so right now it's up to everyone every single person's individual journey journey to do what you need to do to change your own life. Um, we have to take accountability and responsibility for the things that we can, and we have to um, work within ourselves to make those changes that are necessary and needed. Okay. Other, anything other than that, you are accepting the grooming that they are doing to you because of anything other than you taking accountability and doing what you need to do for your own life, no matter what that is, no matter what radical shifts and changes you have to make anything other than that, you are accepting them grooming you to accept a new boundary that you never, ever in a million years thought you would let them step on. Okay. So I'm just saying this because I'm telling you, do not be naive anymore. And I know a lot of you are not. I know a lot of you are here and you're with me because you are up on the intel. Okay. You're down with the shenanigans. But those of you who might need that pick me up right now, don't be naive to the fact that evil is here and it is real. Okay. And there are our contic mental collective planes on this earth that are solely dedicated to the trickery of your mind. Okay. So hold your highest timelines in place, work on your own life. Okay. A lot of us are going to have to close off to the chaotic reality of the world and just zone in that energy into changing your own life right now. Because for many of you, that is 1000% necessary to get you to that level that they can't continue to tamper you anymore. So continue to work and strive Hard to be the best version of your galactic human self, but do not for one second turn a blind eye to the wicked because the controller pillars of society, okay, the controller pillars of society, they run a dark black spiral stargate underneath the Vatican. And there is extra magnetic force here that runs off a natural Saturnian matrix system, which I'm going to talk about, they are pulling thousands of underground waves into their center point of power. And all of it is coming from unhealthy incoming energies coming from black goo. Okay. Coming from harvested louche, coming from decaying radiation. Okay. Decaying radiation within the ley lines, within the gas lines, within the sewer lines. Um, within the grids and within lead rings that they like to block these lines with. This is a part of the Saturnian technology of the beast machines. And they pull these negative energies 
into their power center. And underneath that, they have an iron man hole down there to seal these forces into the iron planetary branding. And um, again, through all of the running, running grids, they're doing this through the balls shaft. Okay. The obelisks. Um, we're going to talk about the obelisks. We're going to talk about the Pentagon nursery crimes. Okay. The five eleven crimes. Um, this is coming through the victors of Christ. Those who have become the king of tyranny. Okay. The pharaonic dark brotherhood priesthoods that hold the king of tyranny in place. These are, these are the ones making sure that this social credit score is implemented and in alignment under their illumined eye and under their satellite systems as well. Okay. The dark brotherhoods are the ones who have been monitoring from their own Vatic Vaticanian satellite systems. Okay. They're there to enforce this through so many ways and where Hydra comes back up in all of this in the squiddies is that throughout history, I'm going to show you a picture of this Cthulhu. Okay. So I'll just share my screen. So this is a version of the Cthulhu. Okay. Um, these are just drawn up pictures. I pulled off the internet. You can, um, research the Cthulhu yourself, um, and see, um, other aspects of it. But this is a, a version of it coming out of the Pacific Ocean. You can see it does have wings. It is one-headed, multi-tentacled. Um, it does have um, the uh, buds that come from it as well. Now, throughout history and to this day, it's important to know that Hydra has been taking the blame for the doings of the Dark Brotherhoods because Hydra holds the feminine principle of the reptilian bodies on this earth. Um, I've touched on Hydra's origins many, many times in other updates. I can leave links in the descriptions, how her celestial being is one with Mu, the motherlands, um, and also one with the Pleiadian descent to this earth 200,000 years ago. This goes back further than that. This goes deeper into the Laniakea systems. I wrote about the Laniakea systems, the Hydra Centaurus super colossal systems. All of this is actually a gate system through the Polynesian Triangle, through the Pacific, okay? But um, not just the inner Earth gate sites there. This is a portal system that goes all the way to the meta universal systems, portal systems that have seeded several variations of squid nations. Okay. Squid nations are a species that have been on this earth for 500 million years. They predate the Draco systems on this earth. They are the commanders and the Piscean overlords to the Draco systems, okay? One of those variations was diversified through the Hydra systems, okay? So you can see Hydra as a squid sometimes. That's where this version of this comes from, but that was an implant matrix system through Greek mythology. Draco has taken over Greek mythology. Now, given Hydra's um, dynamic of creation mythologies, it's always been serpent, multi-headed serpent. This comes through the Nikal tablets um, in Mu, which um, have been um, only really decoded by one person that I know of, James Churchward. Okay, but beyond that came the Piscean overlords, came the Cthulhu, came the Azatoth, okay? These are the supreme overlords that the Dracos report to. These created the Dracos. They created the Anunnaki even as well. They are, these overlords right now, this is what is slowly being eradicated. This is what people are slowly waking up to working their way up to the collective consciousness or the collective deep unconsciousness, the collective deep unconscious shadow. This is the depth of the most outrageous Piscean villain to transcend the evils of the Piscean age. This, these are the descendants. These are the overlords, but the descendants of these are the fish gods of the Dagon, the fish gods of the Vatican, the squid brotherhoods of the Cthulhu cults, the octopus, the dragon with wings. 
which represents the order of the dragon, the overlords of the Draco. This is a malevolent entity hibernating within Raleigh, an underwater city in the South Pacific. The imprisoned Cthulhu is apparently the source of constant subconscious anxiety for all mankind and is also the object of worship by the Draco and the Dagon. He is apocalyptic. The multi-tentacled threat of Cthulhu wants to collapse civilization into an endless dark horror. Okay, this is a being from Pluto, supposedly. I don't know if I fully believe that, but this is what I've heard. The Cthulhu is the hardest, uh, considered the hardest possible catch in the tranquil Pacific Sea, and it can disappear along the sides of boats with a long wander range leading to the illusion that it doesn't even exist at all, and hence highlighting in representing the total illusion of the Piscean systems. And the Piscean overlords are what essentially have to fall to out power for progression to move forward will occur. Okay, so this, this is going to take a lot of bio reverse engineering of our systems. This is going to have us to actually really take a look at the Vatican and every single webbing technology that is associated from there and there forward, the Jesuit orders, okay, the CIA, um, the, the political systems, our, our actual capitals, our colonized colonial capitals of every governing city and every governing country and every governing nation, okay, they have been sexualized under their obelisks okay, as their monuments. And all of this came from the Dark Brotherhood priesthoods of Egypt, okay, all of this was stolen, and hence why it has been cursed. These Cthulhu beings um, I've been seeing are what are coming through the Vatican systems, coming through the Vatican uh, radial diversity that comes up from the Black Spiral Stargate, um, I did see this the night that I did the grid group work, but I was really unable to fully um, express this in that group. Um, now, one thing you may not know about Hydra. Okay, so we kind of have to go back to Hydra because it all plays a part in all of this, right? And I'm talking about the celestial body of Hydra. Um, I'm going to take this down. Is that essentially um, her own family betrayed her, okay? Hercules, he was her celestial brother and he was inducted into the dark brotherhoods to have her head. And these were dark brotherhoods of the Cthulhu cults, okay? Everything from Greece, everything from Rome, Cthulhu cults. This became wars of blood and water, wars of offsprings of Cthulhu, Dagon, fish gods versus the Hydra nations, okay? They needed a pawn. They needed something to take the visibility off of them. If you want to see how this is played out in history, just read the story of Tiamat and Apsu, okay? The mother creation stories to the reptilian. It's all distorted here. Um, and within the Anunnaki, all of that a lot of this is false information. Um, and now I can see where a lot of this came forward through Zachary Sitchin as well. This um, has been tampered here, a lot of the aspects of uh, Tiamat and Apsu with the Anunnaki, the Anunnaki, or should I say the Anunnaki. Um, the Cthulhu cults include a lot. They include the Black Brotherhood Biochemical International Terrorist, that are dedicated to fostering the return of the great old ones, the Nimrod collectives, um, and the Tower of Babel followers, the tampered black sons, and the inserts. And I say the tampered black sons because there are so many versions of this spiritual energy, um, but there is a tampered and fallen aspect to the black sons. This came through the Germanic lines. Um, these are inserts in the 10th dimensional strand of the DNA. This consists of the Brotherhoods of the Beast. Okay, the ones feeding the squaring the circle technologies that we can see everywhere. We can see the squaring the Turks and they do the squaring the circle technology at the obelisks, at their needles. Okay, and they don't just, they do, it's beyond that there because it's not just squaring the circle technology, it's gone into ovum. 
They're, they're uh, recreating ovums and they are inserting their shafts into it. Okay. They're sexualizing um, the actual grids here. Um, and so the, these are, these are stamps of the brotherhoods of the beast. Um, they're feeding the square in the circle technology. You can see it at the Vatican. You can see it at the Kaaba. You can see it down in Canberra in Australia. Um, they are feeding Oh, you can see it in Washington, DC. They're feeding the greater mechanical systems of global Saturnian domination, the robed communities. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, this really comes back to, well, I go into the robed communities more. I've been wanting to talk more about the robed communities, but essentially haven't got to that yet. Like I said, when you dive into this stuff, you are going to experience energetic pushback on these things. When you're diving into this stuff, it is important that you do have spiritual protection. Um, I do feel it is a level of sh uh, building up sh uh, spiritual shielding technologies within your energetic field to withstand these types of um, uh, frequency based aspects in your energetic field to bring this information in and decode, dissect, decipher it, and ultimately transcend and transmute this, which is what we do ultimately need those who are active grid workers to be doing. Okay. Um, we do have many facets of very, um, highly advanced spiritual intellectual groups that are working on these things at this time. So do not have fear, do not have any sort of, um, worry about these things because, um, we have a lot of light workers that are on top of this stuff, but essentially, um, the, the beast brotherhoods, the square in the circle technologies that feed the greater mechanical systems of global Saturnian domination. They've triumphed the anti-clockwise spins and, uh, circles on this earth to generate power within the Saturnian, the organic Saturnian matrices in the earth's fields. Um, this is coming through Freemasonry. This is coming through the master Mason Mahans. This go back, this goes back to the Mahan bloodlines. This is considered the curse of Cain and the dark sorcerers from Lemuria, the ones that sit um, and look down on you. Okay. They have a place here in this 3D world right now. They are the ones that sit a little bit higher than you and look down on you. And I know you felt that judgment. Okay. And I know you know who it's coming from. Okay. These are the robed communities. These, these, these beings have mobile biological bodies that have the power of 10 earths and can entrap and disfigure celestial bodies. The brotherhood that runs the habitat for the ultra powerful machines. This also goes into the brotherhoods of the black Pharaoh. Okay. The pharaonic energy that incarnated into Rome. This is crawling chaos brothers of the Azatoth, brothers of what is called the bloody tongues. These are also brotherhoods of the gates. Okay. I know, you know who I'm talking about. Brotherhoods of the gates, world death, world death organizations, draconian capitals, vertical ascension column implants and planetary branding. This is some of the stuff they're doing. Uh, uh, anchoring and empowering black spiral stargates, the Vatican, Antarctica, U S China, Australia, these brotherhoods are the parasites themselves. They've already been infected. Um, they are uh, all carrying Cthulhu parasites masquerading in a Hydra template. Okay. You guys know, you know, I'm going to go to bat for this because I am really done tolerating the distortions. Um, and if you, like I said, if you examine those pictures closely, okay. If you examine if you examine the, the, the vulgaris, okay, you can examine this picture closely. You will see the parasites are not multi-headed. They are multi-tentacled. Okay. They are squids at a deeper parasitic insight. Okay. And at the core base origin of the hydro systems, it is not actually squid. It is, it is serpent. Okay. Cthulhu is in the orders of the dragon, the dagon, the octopus. Um, dragon with wings. This is at the core of this parasite invasion of evil versus evil. So be aware guys, nothing is as it seems. And another thing that kind of confirmed this for me was the fact that they actually found hexagonal structures inside the love through number nine. So that's just another aspect of the branding of the, of this is biological branding. Okay. 
they're doing this through the metals in the, um, the, uh, number nine. Um, they're blending, they're, they're branding it with hexagonal structures. Okay. Inside, inside it. So that's what I'm seeing. I'm going to go ahead and dive into my map with you guys now a little bit because we are going to talk about this Vatican grid. Now, um, let's get into the map. So this is the Vatican grid I've been working on. And again, I've just started working on this. So there's going to be a lot more that's going to be charted on here, more that will be added as more intel comes in about this grid. But I'm going to start with some of the things that I have observed. So I'm going to actually uh, just kind of zoom into the Vatican itself. We're going to go all the way in because I did a lot of charting here on some of the structures here that I think are important to speak on. We got to go all the way in, guys, because it's, we were really zoomed out. Okay. Hmm, maybe I need to change my... There we go. All right. Okay, so one thing I want you guys to kind of notate is something happened at the end of the Egyptian dynasty. There was a draconian takeover that infiltrated the Egyptian dynasty. <laughs> we can't just sit here and be like, oh, they only infiltrated uh, Germany. Oh, they only infiltrated. No, okay, they infiltrated Germany. They infiltrated the UK. They infiltrated Greece. Okay, they infiltrated Egypt. There was a draconian takeover that happened in Greece, hence the demonization of Hydra, okay? All of this was implanted at this part of history. The humans were ritualized under their control. Romans are the ancient Edomites who unsurped the, the Levitical legal and banking laws, the, Le, the, Le, the Leviathans, okay? This all, this all goes back to, you know, Satanism, Luciferian, but it goes back to, these are the symbols that the Dracos use. This is what they use to brand the earth. Okay. That's why the squiddies in the love potion number nine, um, this represents our debts owed on a lot of levels. This is where we have the Netflix show of the squid games. Okay. Um, this is a literal reflection of a viral immortal debt that is being paid. So Greek mythology came to actually bind us to their cosmic implant and feed us a narrative that would distort the celestial body's true meanings to leave Draco and the Anunnaki and the reptilians out of our cosmic subconscious shared memory. They want you to believe Hydra was evil. They want you to believe Orion was boastful fool. Okay, they want you to believe all of the gods of Olympus in the Iliad, and they already tampered here. Okay, the outer brink limits of piercing a veil of a new realm, and they implanted a matrix in your wonderment. This is really, really what this, this is all about here, this, this area of the grid. This has really been all about blood sacrifice. This is the strongest occult magic that humans um, reptilian humans can ultimately participate in and still is. And hence why we have now campaign nursery rhyme crimes kickoff last week. Okay. This was inducted into everybody's consciousness through ritual, ritualizing the astral world uh, uh, victims. Okay. Um, and these nursery rhyme crimes, they're opening dark gate systems for harvesting a uh, 511. Okay, that's what they're doing. This is coming down from the Devil's Tower. And they do this whenever they want to win a war. They start ritualizing when they want to win a war. These are fear tactics. In this case, they want to win a war over the organic timelines. They will sacrifice to appease their fish gods, to appease their Dagon, to appease Cthulhu. Um, I'm going to just share something else with you guys. We'll go back to my map here in just a second. Um, I believe it's this picture. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you this picture. So this was a picture that I actually used on my Draco occult Aryan seal removal session video that I did. 
Um, this was, this is kind of how this works. You have the Cthulhu. This is the Piscean overlord. He is controlling the galactic uh, overlords. Um, they're controlling the Draco overlords. They are controlling the Anunnaki overlords. They are controlling the uh, Elohim Anunnaki. They are controlling the Illuminati. And they are controlling, you know, um, the fish gods. And they are controlling, uh, you know, it just keeps coming down. This is the order in which we're talking about here. Um, and let me show you another picture here. So when I'm talking about the fish gods... I'm talking about the, the Pope, okay? The religious Mitre hat from Babylon, the priest of H, ancient Dagon fish worship. So once the pagan Roman empire was transformed into the Holy Roman empire, they melded Jesus and the events surrounding the prophetic coming with Babylon mystery religion, creating Roman Catholicism. Um, it's been said underneath that Vatican that they have found over 150 bodies that have been found underneath the Vatican from priest sacrifices. This is probably not all of it, but this is what's been identified um, in their deep, dark well of sacrifice. This all was consciousness technology that went into Rome from the dark priest brotherhoods of Egypt. Like I just told you, they transferred the pharaonic energy here. And within the Vatican um, city, um, in the portals, in the grids here, okay? Um, so what I'm saying by this picture here is this, this is, um, I'm going to get more into this, but essentially this is the fish god um, and that this is the fish hat that the Pope wears. This is also on the ring, the ring of Saturn that he wears on the right hand, okay? Um, because of all of this, basically beans are being trapped. Okay. Beans are being trapped down in this grid here. This is a very powerful fifth dimensional black spiral stargate. Okay. Um, and beans are being trapped in the grid here. Mother Mary is tied up in red etheric ropes and chained to the Vatican. I've seen her etheric body. Okay. She's chained here. Seals of confession they are doing here. I've talked about seals of confession in my um, Draco Arian Occultist seal removal session where people's prayers are getting trapped in the grid here. And that means that they do not make it directly through God. Their prayers are passed first through human observation and human judgment. Souls are bound to the grid here because they cut the connection to source off is what they're doing. This is considered the seal of confession that hosts the global egregore food source and loose station of fear from the wrath of God. And it begins at the causal shocker in the body. Okay. This is, they tap this into the vertical ascension column of the planet because of where the Vatican and the city of Rome resides. Um, and um, they tie this down with large red seals and ties into um, the reproduction system in the ovaries. This energetic seal basically damaged limits and blocks the reproductive system and clogs it with generational wounds of the patriarchy's control. And the loss of sovereignty over our bodies and creational gnosis. Many of us incarnate from birth carrying patriarchal wounds from the planetary Vatican seal of confession. Um, and we can't really trace this back to any specific remembered trauma because they've been doing it for generations and generations and generations and generations. Therefore, we cannot heal it. This is because the seal blocks the memory of the original traumas. This is happening to both men and women and distorts the soul's innate and natural ability to procreate with soulmate fifth dimensional alignment to bring in souls from higher dimensions and evolved reincarnates prepared to anchor in the earth's highest timeline. This is a This is a draconian hybrid distortion that feeds into their forest breeding programs and is now um, feeding their nursery rhyme crimes of Pedagonia and Pedageddon that's kicking off through um, the main, main Malak overlord, which is uh, P-F-I-Z-E-R. This is also a portal system here called the circus. Um, this is what the Draco ringleaders like to call it is the circus. This is the ringleader vortex. This whole area is representing that vortex. Okay. You can see how it is 
This is a six pointed ovum vortex where they're squaring the circle technology here with their sexualization of their needle. Okay, this aligned to the reptilian invasion, which pushed the patriarchal dominations and their needles, their obelisks. Okay, the obelisk here in the center. Okay, this is their power source. These are forms of, like I said, sexualizing the earth grids and are their wand stamps, meaning, yes, they want to put a giant cock all over everything to stake their claim, their reproduction organs they worship. These are the negative forms of the heart chakra, okay? Um, and these only increase the demiurge's power here and the power, and they, and they power this with the sun. They power this through the green lion. They power this through Regulus, which aligns celestial cosmologically directly to Draco. I've done videos on this, how Regulus um, is predominantly uh, 50 to 70% um, draconian origin. Okay. Um, and um, I'll post a link in the description for that video. Um, these are these obelisks in Rome. Um, what the, or how many obelisks they have here in Rome? They have more obelisks in Rome than anywhere else in the world, including Egypt. They brought more obelisks to Rome uh, by Roman empires when they, when they took the pharaonic energy from Egypt. Okay. It represents, it ultimately represents Baal's shaft. Baal, the Canaanite God, the enemy of the Hebrew God, Yahweh. Baal is the son of Dagon. So the obelisk in St. Peter's square, this obelisk here in St. Peter's square, um, this one leaves smaller Q points in the squaring the circle technology. So nodal points of dominance that link into Vatican obelisk networks running nodal points of uh, SC technology into the bigger transmission sites of the beast machines. This whole area here is a portal system. Okay, they have two smaller portals surrounding a larger gate site here that's um, generating uh, inter uh uh, radial technology to the needle itself. Okay. And this generates from the beast machines. The beast machines are operating these spiral vortexes. Um, this obelisk here, specifically in the Vatican City, this is a 4,000 year old uh, needle that came from Heliopolis. Okay. So this obelisk, this is the mark of the dark squid brotherhoods, the priesthoods, the Luxor. Uh, obelisk in Paris, as well as one of these. Now there is an obelisk network that is really important to take note of. Okay. So when, when I was looking at my Vatican grid, it didn't look like I have a lot charted, but it's because, um, you know, all of this is kind of revealing itself. It's like, I have to get the base structures in before I can start going into all of the other crazy woo, -woo I guess we will call it. But, um, essentially some of the, uh, uh, really important uh, obelisk to take note of is there is a three main hub that's running from the Vatican. Okay. And this pertains, like I said, directly to that fifth dimensional Draco Stargate running beneath it. This would be the Washington uh, DC obelisk. Okay. So this one here, um, also Cleopatra's needle in London. Okay. So it would be this one here. And also the Caligula's obelisk in St. Peter's Square. So uh, the three main obelisk network is uh, Vatican, St. Peter's, Cleopatra's Needle, and Washington, D.C. And I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't create a 33-degree uh, uh, master Mahan uh, triangle, essentially, but these three obelisks create the controller pillars of society managed by the Dark Brotherhood Leagues, the Victors of Christ, the Fish Gods, the Dagon, and the Cthulhu Cults. Why do I keep saying Fish Gods? Okay, so I briefly showed you that picture. Okay, well, it has to do with those who were given on this earth the rings of Saturn. And the one person who was given a ring was the Pope who wears the ring of the fisherman, a piscatory ring that holds the merchant's rule, the rule of the Piscean age and the rule of the crucifixion wounds in place.
The power of this ring is immense and holds the victory consciousness in place, the predatorial consciousness in place. A papal bull is what they call it, okay? This is a type, um, they create like seals, a, a type of a public degree um, on letters. Um, and they uh, basically, this is, a, they use this, um, the, the Pope of the Catholic Church uses it. And what they do is they, put it in a lead in a, a lead in, they put it in a lead seal um, in, in order to stamp that um, order into place and to authenticate it. But it is considered the seal of the Dagon and it is worn by the Pope. This is worn by every predecessing Pope who was the successor of St. Peter, who was a fisherman by trade and the apostles were fishers of men they've been hooking the, the merchants rule ever since is what this links back to one billion catholics from all over the world worship this ring kiss this ring on the pope's hand on the right side okay all of the draco seals every single one of the seals that were implanted by the dracos were done on the sixth tonal line. Your right ring finger is your sixth tonal line. This, um, and it comes through the ring that seals all of the Pope's correspondences. They stamp the papal bull seal, the fisherman ring in lead. This is another ritual form that they're taking dark magic from Egypt. Um, because for one, anything stamped in lead or metal stamps these signets through the planetary bodies and brands these seals into the grids and into the human biology. Um, also, this pushes the bull spirit to push authority. Okay. This was pharaonic technology taken from Egypt. They worshiped the bulls here as kings and even created royalty tombs for them in Saqqara to rest as kings. This is just another explanation of how the Romans are the reincarnation of these Egyptian dark priesthoods reincarnated, but also um, to, uh, using uh, power levies to um, enforce um, this information. Um, another quick grid workers note that I had for you guys was, so looking back at my map here, okay, so one thing that we did is we were um, working on the Vatican in the, the grid group work that we did. Essentially, um, we worked on the, the rings of Saturn. So what I had seen there psychically is the Saturnian rings of lead seem to be blocking the ley line transmissions between the organic crystal grid locations. I've come to see this as radioactive decay and black goo through the ley line networks, gas lines, and even through the sewer systems where this energy is getting trapped. I have come to see that the Saturnian matrix is not just an overlay on this planet like we think it is. It's a template, you guys. It's a template that's already built within that that enhances dark vortices, specific dark ley lines. Okay, there's a dark ley line that runs. Okay, there's a dark ley line that runs here. Okay, that interconnects. Um, it starts at the Devil's Tower. It goes down to the. Um, well, I have a picture of it here. So I got this out of a specific book. I'm going to show you. So this dark ley line that goes through Arcturus, Spica, and Regulus, like I said, they're generating that Draco energy through the Regulan gate systems. And it runs down the Devil's Tower, Bear Butte, George Washington statue, to the White House, to the Capitol, to Azores, Spain. And there is a trifecta feedback reflecting pool current that comes back from Azores to the Washington Mon Monument to Lincoln Memorial. Now, this is an inverted funnel that goes back to the Vatican Stargate as well um, that I've been seeing uh, psychically and energetically when I scan into this. Um, and so this uh, just this is the this goes back, like I said, to the Stargate portal at the Vatican and the ley line that generates through the Devil's Tower. This is enhanced through Saturnian and Draco planetary alignments and enhances the magnetic pull and the power points of the dark vortices that generate the vertical black spirals from the central rod and staff of the earth. I've been seeing thousands of vertical black spirals pulling negative energies into the center of the Vatican through these network systems. 
Okay, so grid workers, if you want to know what you need to work on, this is it, guys. Um, what I'm seeing here, um, now this, I got this out of a book. I got this out of the Ley Lines of the UK and the USA by David R. Cohen with Anne C. Silk. Um, it's called How Ley Lines Were Used by the Church, Royalty, City Planners, and the Freemasons. Okay, um, I highly recommend getting this book. What they're also generating too is they may have found a way here to hack into the dragon's bones and are operating from that place as well. So what I mean by the dragon's bones is I'm going to go back to my map. Now, this is just a preliminary video I'm really doing on this, even though this is really long, but um, it kind of helps me get my information organized if I'm just able to start talking about it. I've been holding on to a lot of this intel um, for a while. As you can see, I haven't been on YouTube for three weeks, so I'm usually more scattered when I haven't been on for a few weeks, and it's just because I'm trying to get a thousand things at once out to you guys. Um but essentially, all of these things that we're talking about, all of these specific grid sites, the Devil's Tower, the Bear Butte, the Washington Monument, Cleopatra's Needle, um, all of these obelisks, these three main obelisk network, this all generates to the six tonal line in the body. This is one way that they're tampering and placing implants and seals. Um, and like I said, we do focus on removing those Draco seals out of the six tonal line in that removal session. But essentially what I was talking about was the spine. So it, it, this also generates to what is called the spine of Albion. Um, the spine of Albion, spine of Albion is a, a great ley line that basically goes through the United Kingdom. It goes all the way through. Um, I'll show you guys a picture here, actually. The spine of Albion. This is out of another book that I, I got. Um, this here. Okay. So this is a major ley line that just generates from, uh, Banakil, UK, all the way through Manchester, Edinburgh, um, Birmingham. And this is considered like the dragon spine. This is considered, um, what anchors the intellectual bodies from the dragon into the earth's grids. Okay. This goes through Banakil, Manchester, Birmingham, down to the Isle of Wight. Okay, these are the ley lines that the Vatican network is basically working with. You could see the pictures of that grid and that ley line in a book called The Spine of Albion. This is by Gary Biltcliffe and Caroline uh, Hare. Again, links will be in the description if I slaughtered names, I'm sorry. But essentially, um, this is all running currents to and from the Devil's Tower. Um, and the Devil's Tower can be seen as, I feel they're using the spine of Albion basically to hack into the dragon's bones so that way they can operate from this really deep place within the dragon etheric body. This is all energetic frequency encryption to take us back to the head of Dagon, to the fish god of Babylon. And, you know, it's interesting when you start really diving into all of this, you can see that the Catholic religion itself, it's water elemental. Um, and it gives a really um, distaste to this uh, wateric religion, um, water elemental religion, because it's elusive, it's deep, it's secretive, it's mysterious, it's not forthcoming. And what they're bringing forward through this water is what is the deepest and the darkest in the Pacific. Um, you know, like you have the hat of the Pope. This is considered the fish here. So this is a Draco Stargate underneath the Vatican. This is the main hub here that links into hundreds of obelisks and geometric grid structures that have been set up all over the world. This is how they anchor in the Vatican grid is by the obelisk networks. Now, I, of course, can't go through and chart all of the obelisks all over the world. Um, I think that the ley lines that I did chart here today are substantial in, in um, <laughs> I'm all over the place, in pulling uh, some of the primary generation systems that they have working here. Um, but really, this is a, a global grid because of the way that the obelisks 
are stacked up all over the world in terms of their geometric grid structures all over the world. So this links all of the squaring of the circle technology. This links all of the counterclockwise spin black spiral technology. It links all of the Atlantean tampered crystal grid networks. It links all of the Aquilan grid overlays. It links all of the golden eagle overlays. It links all of the lion grid overlays, all of the running Illuminati grids and underground tunnels. Okay, there are, that's what these lines here are for, underground tunnels that go from the Vatican up to uh, Cleopatra's Needle that run all the way straight down to Jerusalem um, that run to Azores, Spain. Okay, this is their underground network here. Um, they also run underground network, which is another smaller tunnel, but it takes them to the Devil's Hole. Um, there is a, a church here in Rome called Chiggy's should be the chapel, but there is, there's an underground tunnel that goes to, um, Shiggy's chapel here. That's considered the demon's hole. Um, this runs, uh, global grid networks to every global corporation network in the world, all secret service and CIA intelligences all over the world. It taps into its own private satellite network and so much more of all these intersecting overlays and interconnecting grids. It's also running currents, like I said, guys, from the Devil's Tower, which is the organic obelisk. Okay, where's the Devil's Tower? Let's go over there. This is the organic obelisk. And I know a lot of you are really called to go here right now. I've been getting so many people that have been telling me they want it, that they're going out to the Devil's Tower. Um, they're called to it for a reason right now. This is an area that needs um, major clearing. They're running currents from the Devil's Tower, and that is a organic obelisk that holds the frequency of the Tower of Babel. It holds the frequency of the organic needle. This generates down a Saturn ring ley line, one that is built upon lead from rings from Saturn and runs to Bear Butte, runs to George Washington's statue to the White House to the Capitol and runs a trifecta current with reflectors back to Washington Monument and Lincoln Memorial that goes all the way to Azores that runs to underground tunnels to the Vatican. This bridges across the Atlantic and um, it's, it's quite the complex system that they have here. Um, and uh, these energies are also what are currently blocking the Golden Gate in Jerusalem. Okay, when we talk about the, the third Messiah coming forward, these entities come out of a place called Chiggy Chapel. Um, this is the actual demon hole in the Vatican City, and they block the uh, third gate of the uh, temple in Jerusalem with the beans that come out of um, this uh, demon's hole. Another thing that I learned as well is they're actually blocking um, what they do to the books and all of the sacred literature that they've taken from all over the world that they keep down in the archives of the Vatican. They essentially, um, they cut off oxygen to those. So that way, energetically, those books can't be felt. They keep them in a, an anti-life state down in the archives and cut off the oxygen to these. What happens is that the Vatican City needs to be illumined in light. It really does. It needs to be illumined in light. Um, all of those tunnels that run through the Vatican underneath in Rome, these are all Illuminati tunnels. These are Illuminati networks. These are Illuminati offices. These are Illuminati uh, passageways. Okay, and that's what we have to clear. That's what we have to work on as grid and gatekeepers at this time. So um, I'm going to keep bringing forth messages about this. Um, I had to get to an initiatory phase to be able to even speak about it. So it is what it is, but just know that I love you all so much. Stay protected. Keep your spiritual armor strong. Keep your astral field strong. Do not let your astral field weaken. Work on the integrity of your astral field daily. Work on it through the four, through the six density fields. This is where they will first make their invasions um, through black hole systems is through the four, through six density field. Um, if they are trying to 
um, siphon your energy in any way, if they're trying to um, deliberately attack you as you um, work to heal these very dense and dark uh, Vatican grids, um, as a grid worker and as a gatekeeper, if you decide to take on these missions, um, just know that, you know, your service is very noble and it's very needed at this time. We need our warriors at this time. We need those who are not afraid to um, look at the shadow and call it out. We have to draw it out um, because the overlords have to be taken down. The overlords of the Piscean Age have to be taken down, essentially, um, in order for us to overcome this squiddy invasion and everything that's going on. And so, yeah, guys, just know I love you all so much. This was a crazy update. I know it was long. Thank you for hanging in there with me. And yeah, I love you all so much. Take care. I'll see you on the next one. Namaste.